Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to News Dose. So, some exciting things have been happening over the last couple days, including the last 24 hours, including some new PlayStation 5 accessories that we have been talking about even before the PlayStation 5 actually launched. This is something that fans have really been wanting, and, well, PlayStation has finally given us fans what we want. So we are going to go over that one today, as well as the Nintendo Switch having yet another massive month for the month of November. And then also, an Xbox game actually made it to the top five best-selling games, despite it being available on Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, I thought Xbox fans didn't buy games, but yes, we're going to go over that one as well. To start the week off, though, we're actually going to be talking about a controversy, and that is for an upcoming Square Enix PC release being Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate. Of course, it coming over to PC, that's fantastic news and everything, but this has been overshadowed by the pricing. They did reveal this last week at the Game Awards that it will be priced at $70, and as you might expect, fans, they're not particularly happy about this. We have been seeing different publishers try to push into that $70 range ever since since the new generation of consoles have come out with the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Even then though, this isn't widely adopted as of yet. There's certain publishers out there that's pushing for $70 while others are remaining at that $60 price point. Some publishers that's pushed into that $70 price tag direction would be publishers like Sony and Take Two. And now here we also have Square Enix. They did reveal both Final Fantasy VII Remake as well as for Spoken as $70 games, including the PC version and right now this is new for the PC fan base while some PlayStation 5 games have been marked up to $70 as far as I'm aware I can't really think of any publisher that has really pushed for that $70 price tag over on PC until now with Square Enix and yeah the PC fan base has taken this about as well as you would have probably expected there has been a lot of backlash with this move and it's actually gotten so bad to the point that Square Enix has now actually hidden the price tag for Final Fantasy 7 integrate over on the Epic Game Store. It no longer shows that $70 price tag on the Epic Game Store, but rather it just says coming soon, which will release on December 16th. Now, this could mean one of two things. On the optimistic side of things, maybe they could be reconsidering the price and maybe backtrack to $60 or the other possibility is that they're just simply hiding that price tag to kind of hope they end some of the criticism that they've been receiving online. Now, interestingly enough, Forspoken, which is over on Steam, still shows that $70 price tag, which could be a sign of what to expect with Final Fantasy VII Intergrade Remake as well. Again, I do kind of hope that they backtrack and make it $60, but I guess we'll see in just a couple days. Again, it will release on December 16th. Next up, we do have some good news for Halo Infinite and its multiplayer. Of course, fans have been enjoying the multiplayer for close to a month now, and outside of its progression system, for the most part, fans have really been liking Halo Infinite's multiplayer. It feels absolutely excellent, and truthfully, I mean, to this point, I still cannot put this game down. It really is that good, and probably one of the best competitive multiplayer games that I have played in a very, very long time. However, one of the issues that Halo Infinite has had since its launch is just its overall lack of playlist. Right now, you have things like Big Team Battles, Quick Match, and then you have Ranked. And the thing is, is when you play Ranked, you play a random game. Sometimes you'll play Slayer, sometimes it'll be Oddball, while others, it's Capture the Flag. And really, sometimes you just don't want to play Objective, and that is where some of these other playlists would be really, really beneficial. And, for, I mean, for that matter, there's just a lot of people that simply won't play the Objective at all, which is incredibly frustrating, to say the least. But, the good news here is that they have now confirmed that new playlist will be coming to Halo Infinite, and actually, it will be out tomorrow on December 14th. Yeah, that's right. They are pushing this out tomorrow, and it will include four new playlists, being Slayer, Fiesta, Free For All, and then Tactical Slayer SWAT. That is a nice little addition right there, as that's always been really popular within the Halo community. But there you go. If you were looking for more playlists within Halo Infinite, you're going to get exactly that again tomorrow on December 14th. Next up, we do have some exciting PlayStation 5 accessories to talk about today as they did reveal some new controllers as well as finally, yes, they finally revealed some official PlayStation 5 
faceplates. Now that is something that fans have been asking for for a very, very long time. So we'll get into that here in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at these new PlayStation 5 DualSense controllers. They did reveal three new color variants here being the Starlight Blue, Nova Pink, and then Galactic Purple. All three of which will release on January 14th, but however, if you want the Galactic Purple on the 14th, you're going to have to buy that one through PlayStation Direct. Otherwise, if you do pre-order the Galactic Purple somewhere else, you won't receive it until February 11th, so do keep that in mind. If you want to get it earlier, definitely get it on PlayStation Direct. These controllers will be going for $75 a piece, which, I mean, yeah, that's a little bit pricey and everything, but if you are looking for another PlayStation 5 controller, there's definitely some really attractive options here. I personally like the Starlight Blue, and I did buy the Cosmic Red last time they revealed some controllers, and I absolutely love that thing. In my opinion, I think that thing looks stunning in person, and it does seem like PlayStation is doing a good job this generation with producing some really attractive controllers. The more exciting thing about this announcement, though, is actually that they officially announced some PlayStation 5 faceplates. And that is because fans have been wanting this to happen for such a long time now. When we first found out before the PlayStation 5 even launched that you could simply remove the faceplates, I immediately said that it was a genius design because you can dramatically change how the PlayStation 5 looks. And I'm going to kind of stick with what I said because for the most part, with consoles in the past, you have to pay like another $400, $500 to get a limited edition model so with just being able to swap the face plates for the playstation 5 i think that opens up a lot of possibilities of changing the way your playstation 5 looks without spending a bunch of money to get a completely new console so that is why it's so cool to see how easy it is to customize the PlayStation 5. And while they did reveal some new faceplates today, that kind of goes alongside the new controllers that they have produced. You can get a Galactic Purple, a Nova Pink, a Starlight Blue, a Midnight Black, or a Cosmic Red custom shell. However, it does seem like it is a little bit more pricing than what some fans were expecting. These faceplates do sit at $55. Now, at the same time, to be fair, this does appear to be cheaper than some of the third party options out there including dbrand which i believe is about 70 dollars so it is cheaper than that and then also this is an official face play so you do know that it is going to be of high quality right out of the gate now, for me personally, I do like what they're doing with the faceplates here, though. I know the pricing can definitely be debatable, but I'm really hoping they bring out some really interesting themes and limited edition faceplates in the future. I'm currently not going to buy any of the options that are currently out there, but if they bring out a PlayStation 2 themed or a PlayStation 1 themed faceplate, yeah, I might be on board for that. And that's kind of the thing about having swappable faceplates. It opens up a lot of options just like that. Let me know in the comments below though on what you think about all of this. Are you interested in changing your PlayStation 5 faceplate? And if so, what color do you like? Now we do also have some interesting Nintendo and Xbox news to talk about today as some NPD sales numbers made their way online. Of course, NPD is where they track United States sales numbers and we do have the month of November results in now. And the first of which is actually a little bittersweet as it does look like these console manufacturers continue to do very well, but year over year, there was quite a decrease here. It does appear that console hardware sales in November have fallen off by 38% to 883 million in November compared to the same month in 2020. So we do have a bit of a decrease this year, though it's not necessarily because these consoles aren't in high demand or anything, but rather it's actually just because there's all of these stock shortages going across the industry right now. It's still incredibly hard to get the console that you want because they just can't make enough stock right now. So that is playing a major factor in this holiday and how well these consoles can actually sell. But interestingly enough, for the 35th time out of the last 36 months, the Nintendo Switch yet again is the best selling console for the month of November in the United States. That is quite incredible for a few different reasons, really. One being, I mean, this just continues to show you how well the Nintendo Switch does year in and year out. I mean, you're talking about a console that is now going on five years old and it still consistently is the best selling console on the entire market. It did sell 1.13 million units in the month of November. And yeah, the Nintendo Switch just continues to have a lot of success. Now also, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl got off to a very fast start last month. We kind of already knew this was happening across the world, but now you can add the United States as well, as it was the number three best-selling game in the month of November. 
The only two games that sold more was Call of Duty Vanguard and then Battlefield 2042, which are huge franchises in the United States. I will be really interested to see the legs of both Battlefield 2042 and Call of Duty Vanguard though, just considering how poorly received these games have been thus far. Now, interestingly enough, the number two best-selling console was actually the Xbox Series beating out the PlayStation 5. So Xbox did manage to stock more units in the month of November, and do keep in mind that that still very much is the situation. Both these consoles are incredibly high in demand right now, and both of them will continue to sell out. So whoever can produce the most units will sell the most. But it does seem like Xbox did a very good job in the month of November. But I think what is most interesting here is actually the number four best-selling game being Forza Horizon 5. Yes, this is a game that launched directly into Xbox Game Pass, yet it also is one of the best-selling games of the entire month. In fact, Forza Horizon 5 is now the best launch month for any Forza game ever, including Forza Motorsports. That's how successful this game has been so far, which is absolutely incredible. And I think this just kind of shows you what Xbox is doing correct here, because they do give you options on how you want to play your games. Yes, if you want to play Forza Horizon 5 on Xbox Game Pass, you absolutely can do that. You can go pick it up on PC or wherever. It doesn't really matter. They're giving you that option. But one thing you are seeing here is that there's still a lot of people out there that will buy these games. See, there's this illusion that Xbox Game Pass games cannot have success outside of Xbox Game Pass, even though that has been proven wrong time and time again. And there's also this illusion that Xbox fans don't buy games. But as you're seeing here, that's clearly not the case, as not only did Forza Horizon 5 have a very successful launch outside of Xbox Game Pass, but in fact, it was actually the best selling launch month out of any Forza game ever. Yeah, that contradicts the narrative quite a bit there. If anything, though, I think this just further shows you that Xbox has a very healthy ecosystem. Whether you want to buy your games on Xbox, PC, or if you want to play them on Xbox Game Pass, it doesn't really matter because a lot of people are jumping into these games and that's exactly what you want to see. Again, this does continue to show that they have a healthy ecosystem and I would expect to see something similar for the month of December with Halo Infinite. Either way, big congrats to Xbox and Playground Games for all their success with Forza Horizon 5. Now, speaking of Xbox, we do have one more game to talk about here just real quickly, and that is the upcoming Xbox console exclusive Scorn. This is a game that I know that several Xbox fans have been excited for for quite a while. This is a grotesque horror-esque game with quite an alluring art style. It looks really creepy and it's extremely atmospheric, and this has caught the eyes of a lot of fans out there. However, it does appear that it has gotten quite a significant delay with them now confirming that it will release in October of 2022. They did now reveal that it has reached 75% content completion and that they should have it ready for October of next year, which actually is quite fitting for a game like this releasing in the spectacular month of October. Now, I know for some fans it might be a little disappointing that you have to wait almost another year entirely, but as I've kind of said in the past, that's not necessarily a bad thing at all. As we've seen with Halo Infinite, sometimes a delay is very much needed, and I mean, in Halo Infinite's case, it turned out to be a pretty extraordinary game. And then on the opposite side of things, you have something like Cyberpunk 2077, which it's quite clear that that game should have used some more time to actually develop it, and maybe it wouldn't have had the problems it had at launch. So I do look at a delay like this as a good thing because this game does look like it has some potential, and now hopefully they can just execute. So here's to hoping that Scorn will turn out to be as good as it looks next year in October of 2022. On to the poll of the day though, we did have the Game Awards last week and I wanted to know what was your favorite reveal at the Game Awards? And well, if you take a look here, 11% of you all voted for Sonic Frontiers, 45% of you voted for Hellblade 2, which looks phenomenal, we'll get into that here in just a second, then 14% Alan Wake 2, would have really liked to have seen more votes for that game in particular, and then 23% Star Wars Eclipse. Now, 8% of you did vote for other, some of you said things like Wonder Woman, there was a lot of votes for Suicide squad the matrix unreal engine 5 demo which was pretty incredible so there was a lot of variety in the comments but yeah hellblade 2 was the runaway winner here and i think it's kind of easy to see why i think that the gameplay reveal here for hellblade 2 
honestly was mind-blowing. I, I said it last week, but I didn't even realize that they were showing gameplay at first because that's how realistic it actually looked. It is quite insane how good this game actually looks from a graphical standpoint. I have seen some fans out there kind of say that they want to see more of these next generation only games that are just not possible on Xbox One or PlayStation 4 hardware, and you're definitely seeing that here with Hellblade 2. But the other thing that's so exciting about this is that once again, it seems like it has that gripping narrative. It drew me in immediately, and I want to know more about this game. Where is this story going? Because it just has that amazing acting from Melina Jorgens once again. She does such a phenomenal job, and it just sucked me into the universe all over again. So the original Hellblade was already a spectacular single-player story-driven experience, and once again, it seems like Hellblade 2 is going to be just that. So I don't think it's just necessarily the visuals that's blowing people away, but also the story itself. It just looks exceptional in every possible way. Now, I was a little surprised to see how many of you all voted for Star Wars Eclipse. I do think that this one does have some potential with Quantic Dream developing it. They've worked on games like Heavy Rain. They've worked on Detroit Become Human. And not only do they know how to make pretty games, but they do also know how to make pretty good narratives as well. So I think that one right there is pretty interesting. But I think the one thing that we're really seeing here is is that there's just a lot of good looking games to look forward to over the next couple years. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.